Hi everyone. Today we'll be talking about the plant tribe of the week, Andropogoniae. So from the Andropogoniae tribe, we'll be talking about and you'll be responsible for knowing little and big blue stem, Schizacrium scoparium and Andropogon gerardii. So first off, we have big blue stem, Andropogon gerardii, a very, very common um, species across the United States, except for in the West where we are, but very common in the Midwest and in the East. It's a perennial native plant, um, and it's really important forage. And it has an inflorescence that we might describe um, as a panicle, a digitate panicle. Um, and so you can see a digitate inflorescence in this diagram here. Big blue stem specifically typically has three digitate or um, usually has three rames. Um, and so you can see that in the image above me. And so sometimes it kind of looks a little bit like a turkey foot. And that's because the rame nodes are also a little hairy as well. And a rame, if you're wondering, is a special kind of branch that has paired spikelets at each node. And a digitate means several members rising from the same point of origin. And so you can see here um, in the diagram, there's a single point where all of those rames are coming out of. And again, so I've circled a couple of the rames in the various diagrams for you to, um, to fully grasp what a rame is. Next, we have the spikelets, and often the spikelets are paired. There's often one sessile and one uh, pedicillate um, spikelet. And so I have a diagram in the slide here so you could see what a sessile and pedicilled spikelet looks like. A sessile spikelet is kind of what we have been used to and what we've been looking at, and that kind of lays directly on the node, whereas the pedicilled spikelet comes out on a small pedicel. And again, the sessile spikelets specifically, the lower ones are typically what we call perfect. So they all have all the floral parts. Um, and the lemmas are ons, and the ons are geniculate, um, or ge sorry, um, geniculate. And just a reminder, geniculate means it's uh, sharply bent. And then the first gloom is usually grooved or dished shaped. The pedicillate spikelets, which again come off of that um, paired uh, spikelet a little bit, um, typically are neuter or staminate, and so they're not fully fertile. Um, and so they're not what we would consider perfect flowers because they don't have all the floral parts in that um, spikelet. And typically the pedicel spikelet um, for big blue stem are onless. So that means they have no on. And so here is another close-up photo of um, a big blue stem flower and just a reminder grasses have flowers and up in the upper corner you can see the distribution of big blue stem across uh, north america so we're going to go through a few characteristics on this slide so feel free to pause it as needed um, because there'll be a lot of material first off the vegetative characteristics Oftentimes, big blue stem can be rhizominous and uh, typically will appear cespitose, which again means bunchy. It's like a bunch grass. Um, and it's uh, typically what we might consider a robust or kind of a big plant. Um, the combs, when they're the combs, typically grow erect or straight and tall, and they range from 0.5 to 2.5 meters. So that's pretty tall, 1.6 to 8 feet tall. Oftentimes, they're glaucousy and can be grooved on one side. The sheaths typically are compressed uh, to the comb and they're often purplish at the base. The blades are often what we call villus, which means they're long and soft macro hairs. And so you could see the leaf blades on the image um, to my where my hand is right here. And uh, so you can kind of see it kind of looks like big uh, strands of hair. In terms of growth characteristics, it's a warm season grass, which is different than many of the grasses we've reviewed for the class so far, so keep that in mind. It typically has rapid growth mid-spring in the fall, and it stays green throughout the summer. 
and growing points stay low until late summer. It usually reproduces primarily from rhizomes, um, so again that means asexually and those are underground stems that pop up and allow for new kind of cespitose bunches of blue stems. In terms of forage, it makes really excellent forage because it's highly palatable um, to all livestock and wildlife. And oftentimes it's preferred over other grasses. Like we kind of discussed this week, some plants are ice cream plants. And so this is a really excellent forage species that is preferred um, by a lot of, species, a lot of um, wildlife and livestock species. Um, and it's great grazed fresh, or it can also be turned into hay. In terms of habitat, it typically occurs in upland and lowland prairies, as well as savanna woodlands and wet overflow sites, and Brillia, all soil types. As you saw on the map, it's pretty common, um, or I mean, it's pretty widespread, I mean, and it's also very commonly used in seed mixtures because um, it is really great forage. So next, we're gonna be moving on to little blue stem, Shizacarum scoparium. In terms of its stats, it's also a perennial native species. And its inflorescence type is what we could call a spicate raceme. And so previously we talked about spikes. Um, we also talked where um, we have sessile um, spikelets. And then we also have panicles, which have branched pedicels. And now we're talking about racemes which are also pedicelled, but not necessarily branched. And uh, here you could see a special case of a raceme, which is a spicate raceme. So that means, again, the, the florets are pedicelled, and on this case, on one side of the rachilia or rachis. And at maturity, this often causes the inflorescence to have a, often a zigzag pattern. The spikelets often are paired, and so there's a sessile spikelet that's perfect, and it has a lemma that's on, and uh, gen that which is typically bent and twisted. And then it also, again, like we saw with big blue stem, it has a pedicelate spikelet that's staminate or neutered, and it can be infertile. The rachilia and pedicels are often what we call pillows which means they're very hairy. Um, as you can see in this image above us, um, you can see the hairs very clearly and um, they're what you kind of look like, look for in, when you're thinking about like soft hairs on a plant, um, but that aren't bristly and spiky. Vegetatively speaking, it often grows um, cespitose, which again, bunchy, bunch grass, and it has short rhizomes, and so it can also spread asexually, like um, big blue stem. The combs often grow erect, but they're often slender, um, too robust, and not necessarily always robust. And they're flat, and they're not grooved like big blue stem. And they can be green to purple. The combs themselves can be green to purplish, and often glaucous. The sheaths themselves are often keeled, which again means they're kind of um, bent like a, or fold, uh, yeah, kind of folded or bent like a, the bottom of a boat or the keel of a boat. And often the sheaths are laterally compressed to the combs. So in terms of little blue stem, again, Shizacrium scoparium and its growth characteristics, it's another warm season grass, which again, we haven't really come across much except for this week, and we're going to want to think about why that is. It typically starts growth in late spring, and the inflorescences typically, or the flowering stalks, typically appear in midsummer, and then it matures by early fall, and the seeds mature by October, um, or sometimes till November, depending on the weather that year. It can reproduce from seeds, but also from tillers and rhizomes. And so again, it also has mechanisms to propagate asexually or vegetatively. In terms of forage, it's good for most classes of livestock as well as for wildlife when it's immature or young. But once it reaches full maturity, it still can be okay for horses and cattle, but oftentimes it becomes too coarse for sheep and goats but it can also be important upland hay. In terms of habitat, it occurs in prairies, woodland savannas, dry hills, and all kinds of different soil texture types. 
And when there's season long moderate grazing, um, typically the plant community would favor a little blue stem uh, because big blue stem is a much more desirable forage species and more of that type of ice cream forage plant that we discussed. And um, little bit blue stem is also pretty common and it's frequently also used in seed mixes. So first off, there's a map of the distribution of little blue stem. So you can see it's pretty common throughout the continental North America, um, through the United States, as well as Canada. And then to finish off, here's a nice photo of big and little blue stem in a nice prairie. And with that, um, we'll be doing some activities related to this material next week. Um, and this week we'll be focusing more on midterm review during the active class section.